Hello, and welcome to the Three Golden Apples for Business Writing Success, presented by Betty Withrow, myself, of the Writer's Launchpad. This training is, is for the purpose of giving you tools that you can use right away to create success in your business communication. And the same tools apply whether it's spoken or written. So uh, we have these, uh, these classic materials that come down from the schools of rhetoric of old that I have used throughout my life as an entrepreneur and now put into modern form for them to be easy to grasp and to use in your business communication. So now I'm going to share my screen and get started with, with the, uh, the three golden apples. Here we go. Share. And then I have to move this to slideshow away from start. Okay. The three golden apples for business writing success are boiled down into three words ultimately that carry all the principles of the arts of persuasion. Now, early in life, I learned these arts from a powerful mentor whose name is Mrs. Shelby. And she taught me rhetoric and advanced composition uh, which was the most rigorous discipline I had ever encountered in terms of the English language. I was always a language major. I was the kid who carried around the dictionary and did, uh, obsessed over winning the spelling bee and diagrammed sentences for fun. That was me. And I took all the English classes I could get as well as foreign languages. And then when I encountered Mrs. Shelby's class, I, I was changed forever because she was so loving and so demanding at the same time and gave me these tools that came from rhetoric, which is a, a, it's a branch of philosophy. So it's very deep stuff. And I carried around books and wrote incessantly the whole time I was in her class, more than once reduced to tears as she destroyed my position. <laughs> uh, but I learned that the, the value of being in tune with these, uh, these simple things that connect you, no matter whether it's business writing or some other kind, they connect you with your audience and build the rapport that you need to get your message across. So that here's what they are. They, there are three and it's language, choice and outcomes. That's the three word boil out. Now if for, for language, that language is the means that you use to, to address your audience. And I'll get into that a little bit more in the, in the next few slides. For, uh, for language, I say to speak in the language of your marketplace. And what, do, what that means is to connect with people where they are, that you learn to understand who your audience is and what's important to your audience. And how are you going to reach them in an effective way? And we'll get further into that as we go along. Golden apple number two is about choice. And the, the choice that's involved is whether or not they're going to buy into your presence in terms of business writing. How do you present yourself as being the best possible choice in the situation? This is the, the place where you, you build on golden apple number one, you understand who your customer is and how you're going to meet them. And then you present yourself in such a way that they begin to see that you fit their need. And that's the key is learning to understand what the customer needs and presenting yourself as being the solution. Golden apple number three revolves around outcomes. What outcomes can the, the customer or the client uh, expect when they work with you? And how will you present them so that they are, it's easy for them to visualize that you have created the solution and all they need to do is uh, put you on their team and it will happen in the way that they want. So this system, putting this system together, it makes it simple to put together your writing and that, that gets you noticed. And the whole point of business writing, of course, is to increase your income. Here's, here's my slide representing my qualifications, uh, my three-step writing system. 
uh, my love of language is truly lifelong and I continue to learn more about language at every opportunity that I can so that I have more to share with my clients. When you, uh, when you use these three, these three golden apples together, you have, uh, you have the ability to create success. So let's get further into golden apple number one, speaking in the language of your market. In understanding your market and positioning yourself as the only choice, you first have to get clear on exactly who is your customer, who is your market, and integrating the topics that are going to appeal to them. So who are your customers? And what are your customers looking for? In most business environments, you have one person who is the one who's able to make the decisions of hiring you or buying from you. So you want to get clear about what tone it is that they use in communication and keep your tone consistent with the way that the business communicates. For example, if you're speaking in a corporate environment, the people in that environment have a certain kind of a culture that is the way that the business is conducted and everyone tailors their communication accordingly. They're bottom liners. They don't want you to waste their time. They don't want to uh, have too much personal content involved because it's not part of their culture. They're systems oriented. They want to see results. That, and in order to be able to communicate effectively there, you need to be able to show that you're ready to integrate with their systems, that you or either have those tools in place already, or that you're ready to learn them and, and get on board on the level that works for them. So there's not a whole lot of personal, it's all systems and process oriented. But then if you're speaking to entrepreneurs, very often they're people who have left the corporate environment because they wanted more personality and more personal contact within their business environment. And these are people who teach. They teach in the way that they present themselves in their business and they want you to educate them. There's a much bigger window of opportunity for personal contact and a certain type of communication that's all based on value. You know, what do you bring to the table that they can use? What do they have that you can use? And you create a conversation uh, on that level with, the, uh, you're, you're certainly still very business oriented and process oriented. A lot of entrepreneurs have a lot of deep tech going on and uh, you need to be able to to meet them at the level that they are with their tech if possible, or let them know that, um, that you have tools that, that you use that are your consistent ways of doing things. So, and you know, that's, that's a, uh, one more level of personal communication. And if you're speaking with a small business, it's yet more, it's more community oriented actually, because the chances are good that they are in a local environment where their customers and their staff all live nearby. Uh, oh, Joey's here. Let me let Joey in. So, um, welcome Joey. So after you, oh yeah, that's right. We're, we're on small business, excuse me. <laughs> we're on small business. When you're talking to a small business, they are in their communities, their staff, their customers live nearby, and they have a lot invested in letting their community know that they give back. They probably appear or in, in charity events or sponsor local social activities and that kind of thing. So they're, uh, they're more ready to talk to you on a personal level usually, but not always. I mean, you may go to a, a small business environment and find that the, the, the owner is ready to jaw with you and get to know you while they're making up their mind whether they wanna do business with you or not. Or they may not, they may just say, okay, what do you have? Can you please leave something for me? I'm busy, I need to mind the store. So you need to be ready to uh, engage at either level or something in between because it can be a combination of those things. And uh, so in any communication, whether you're picking up the phone to talk to them or you're sending them flyers or whatever, when you're targeting a small business, the community and personal connection is gonna be really important. If you're talking to a retailer and you're a wholesaler talking to a retailer, then there's one more degree of personal connection involved. The, uh, the retailer wants to get to know you a lot more. They want to understand whether or not they like you. 
and whether they like what you have. And uh, each, each one has a different level where they may be in the command structure of the business. For example, if it's a business owner, then she has full control over what is bought in the business. And if she's in a buying team, on the other hand, she has to answer to the rest of the command structure and she has uh, whatever authority she's granted in that, uh, on that level. But additionally, when you're talking with a retailer, you need to look at who are their customers? Who is it that are, is, who's the end user and consumer? Because the name of the game is to reach that person or that consumer and satisfy that need. And if you're presenting something to the retailer that's gonna make that happen, and you hit it off on a personal level, you're, you got, uh, you know, you're kind of in there. And they may or may not be ready to buy at that moment, but you're in the conversation and you can keep the conversation going depending on what their buying cycle is like. If you're selling personal products or services, like uh, you're a salon owner um, or a massage therapist or a, a health and wellness person, then the personal connection is absolutely crucial. You have to be loving on them. They're, you know, that, that's what they want. That's what they're coming to you for is to be known and to be heard and for you to show up for them and let them know that they, they're, they are your world. And um, so getting to know your customers really well and creating a stream of communication that goes on, that, goes, uh, that hopefully goes on outside the business as well, then that's the key to success because you're then in their community and they're ready to keep buying from you. And in today's market, community is really becoming a key thing. Everybody wants to be part of a tribe if possible. So when you're able to offer them that kind of an experience, they're ready to, to be involved with you on an ongoing basis. So you've looked at who is your customer and then put yourself in their shoes and notice how, how do they speak? What's their language? You know, you've kind of, you've gotten a feel for what their culture is like. You know, they may be, uh, you know, they may be process oriented all the way down the, the spectrum that I just described all the way to super personal. And how do they speak? Or, uh, you know, the process oriented people are bottom liners. You know, uh, they, they'll say, okay, good. I see your product presentation. You know, can you, I, I, you know, hopefully you've got all your, your ducks in a row, you know, your, uh, your barcodes, your, you know, what, whatever it is that is going to fit into their system. And, uh, and can you please just leave me your cell sheet and I'll get back to you or, 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 you know, please call me in, in two or three days. And that, that goes to, that actually goes to Apple number three, which we'll get to later. But anyway, so the, the corporate, you know, they have that, uh, that very fast, you know, please don't waste my time. There's somebody right behind you attitude. Um, whereas like the entrepreneurs, their, their style is different. They're, they're kind of more, they're looser around the edges. They're more ready to listen. Um, they may or may not make up their mind whether they want to deal with you right away, but their, their style is more open and it is more, it's, it's more information oriented, you know, teaching oriented. Who are you? Where are you about? Um, and, and you can uh, do your research, obviously, beforehand, before you contact any of these people, you've taken the time to look them up, see where they are in their business, what are they focused on, what's their history, and so on. So, that, you know, the, the key to all of this is to meet people where they are. You don't want them to have to remember you. You want to remember them and, and do so effectively and, uh, and learn to understand them. If you ever get understood in business, it's, it's secondary at most. <laughs> that, that happens later after you've been doing business for years and you become friends, but, you know, or, or shorter if you have a real rapport. But uh, you know, overall, the main thing is you understanding where the customer is reaching them where they are. Now, if you have a, somebody who's really laid back or you know, an athletic oriented market, that's even, that's, that's kind of goes even more personal, but in a different way because they're into the sporting side of life and they don't wanna be talked to in a formal way even, uh, unless, well, like say you're talking to surfers, right? Now surfers are all about being out of the box and, um, and, not, and, and informal. 
So you wouldn't want to talk to them at all in the same language as many of these other styles, unless they have a surf company. And, they, and then it's kind of a combination there where they're definitely on the business level, but they still keep everything as informal as possible because that's why they're there. And so, you know, you look, look carefully at your style of your customer and then look at the topic that you want to present to them and having it be really in alignment and, uh, and in congruity with what the business cares about based on that style that you have identified. You know, for uh, you, you want to write to entrepreneurs about things that uh, that are engaging for their business. Uh, it gives them information that they can use, and then say, if you want to know more, contact me. Um, that type of uh, of communication. So uh, I, I think I'm going to pause right now, so we can do, get can do a little dive in here on some personal and. Uh, ask you guys if you have questions about this. Joey. Hey, Betty, how are you? Good I'm good, how are you? Good, 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 good. So um, in regards to like, let's say that you, like for myself, I actually work with entrepreneurs and creative types, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. so would you suggest that my topic headers, and I like bottom liners, like that's who I'm attracted to, you know, clearly. Right. Um, <laughs> um, would you suggest as a topic header that I pick a different article that speaks just to the creative types and different article just for entrepreneurs or can I find a topic header that speaks to both? I think you can speak to both, but I also think it's good to uh, sometimes tilt your, your topic header to one or the other so that they feel kind of special in your market. You know, like you, you can have one that uh, well, creative entrepreneurs. I mean, we're all creative entrepreneurs, right? Right. <laughs> and, but then, then there's, uh, well, on, on which level are you creative? You know, uh, for instance, if you're working with, if your market is, uh, I know you have an author market and then you have other creative people. I think if you speak a little bit more deeply to that level of creativity in some of your topics, it would be good. And then uh, the, 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 the bottom liners have a different take on what's important. So writing directly to them is, is uh, you know, uh, not necessarily, I wouldn't say excluding the creative part, but focusing more on the, the more faster paced level of communication in some posts would be good. So it doesn't have to be always the same. I mean, uh, because you have a couple of different markets that you're cultivating. Awesome. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, so um, who else has a question? Questions, comments? No, but uh, this is beautiful way you, I always have a problem to, who is your customer? You know, usually think about, uh, I def, I def, uh, identify some age and the habits and stuff like this but, but now it's just my mind is blown up it's so beautifully you, you know, straighten it up and I think I'm going sliding back to, to personal products again you know with my idea yeah. and I, I would be more in this very hard hard market so it's all rely on me my goal was to take it off my shoulders so I'm thinking reshaping my mind now to go to probably one of the previous um, types of the customers so just my comment on that thank you <laughs> yeah well it, you know mariam i think a lot of the people who had been using your salon services are also your customers for your spiritual aspect of things well, the, yeah yeah they are you're right yeah they are but it's my my idea was to spread my wings more beyond the the personal touch you know right 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 and and you can i mean you you can do both um when you're because a, a, a person who's involved in spiritual matters that they, they clearly want they want to be reached in their own heart and that that's the your that's your first task is to connect with them on that level you know find that place of connection where you can speak to them about the things they care about. And then yeah. you, you also can expand on that and say things like that, 
you know, through the meditation, you can, you can grow that field and, um, and have a larger vision of who you are. Create a program. Okay. To sell to other, other, play, other types. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's That's like I said, idea. whoever you have for your contacts for your first business is a good prospect for your new business. Oh, yeah. Right. I like that. <laughs> Sounds good. So, yeah, thank you. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Okay. This Are is what we're here to do. And I know for, I know for me, um, my focus this year, well, it's been my focus for a while, but um, when I build meaningful relationships with people, those are the people who buy from me. Right. So right. Um, I, I don't, I tried identifying my customer type a while ago and it's very different. <laughs> it's like all over the place. So mm -hmm. I just, I just work on connections. Yeah. So it, because you're selling art, which is a very personal thing, um, it doesn't really matter who your customers are or where they work. It's, it's more about that other kind of, of connection. So you do, you're speaking in this very personal way. I mean, everything I've seen that you've written is very personal and, um, and connecting at a certain wavelength that you clearly feel, you know, that works for you. So um, you're getting people to actually buy into your vision, literally, because you, you present your vision as being this large thing, and then you draw people into it based on a certain kind of magnetism that you build through that connection. But it's so interesting because I was, you know, just even five years ago, I was terrified of writing. <laughs> so I feel much more comfortable now. No, e even people who have been writers, I, I, there's somebody in the Word Nerds group who was telling me how, you know, his, his first job was at a proofreading, a proofreader, and he knew that he, he his, his wife who passed away had, had been on him to write, and he was terrified of doing it because it's hard, and I said, I know it's hard, <laughs> but it's good to do it, you know, you can do it anyway, and uh, it's good that you overcame that fear because, uh, we need people to write. You know, r right now I'm having this experience where I, I posted about uh, my 50 year anniversary of walking into Big Sur. And all of a sudden I have people going, I can't wait to read your book. And I'm like, well, you're going to have to, you know. But uh, so I, I said, okay, this is what they want. And I got back into the book and I have to tell you some really amazing synchronicities have been happening since then. <laughs> <laughs> like, I guess, I guess I'm being called. I hadn't worked on it for two years because it's hard. I mean, this is a hard book to write, but I'm going to do it, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty amazing what can happen. So do we have any, any further comments about uh, Apple number one? Okay. Um, now, what happened to the... Okay. Pause recording. Wait, you mean I've been recording this whole time? Oh, well. <laughs> I thought I paused it. Okay, so we'll just keep going. Here's Apple number two. I, and I don't think anybody's shared anything too, too radically personal for that to happen. And we're only sending this recording to the people who signed up anyway, so don't worry about that. Um, how to position yourself for success in Apple number two is that uh, you, you present yourself and you're still on Apple. You're still on Apple number one right now. Sister on your slide. It is. Yeah. Oh, that's weird. Oh, wait. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah. It's paused. Okay. Wait, how do I do this? Wait. Okay. I'll stop the share and then reshare. How's that? Fix that. Ah, <laughs> don't mess with me. <laughs> Thanks for letting me know. I'm like, I thought you were seeing what I was seeing. Are you seeing Apple number two now? Okay, good. We're seeing Apple number two, the tip. Okay, good. So in Apple number two, you look at your expertise and present that to your customer to show that you're the best choice. So each person here clearly has more than one skill set. I think we all know that by the time we've gotten here. We, we know how to do more than one thing, and we're good at more than one thing. We're even experts in more than one thing. However, there's going to be one that is the best asset to present in the current situation. So what makes you stand out from others? Providing examples of how you've created success in the past. Look through your, your varied skill set 
and find that one skill that's the most in alignment with the needs of the customer. You've looked at what the customer needs, you understand what that need is, and how are you going to say, I am the one who can fill that need for you? You need to have examples in place of what you've done before. Um, you know, your pictures are always good. Um, anecdotes are good. Testimonials are awesome. And, uh, and show that you have what it takes to get this job done. You know, for example, uh, this is something none of us is doing, but it makes a nice example. Uh, say you have a business painting buildings and you are approaching someone who clearly needs that service. You have uh, before and after pictures of what that business looked like. And you can say, here's what we did for this business. And you can see how with our process, we made it simple for the business owner they didn't have to figure out very much. They just told us what they wanted and we went ahead and made it happen. Or if you're presenting uh, uh, products, you know, say you have a physical product. I, I, I worked in food service for a really long time. In fact, I still have a food service business. And the best thing I can say, people always say, well, where else are you, or who else is buying from you? And when I tell them who else is buying from me, that finishes the conversation and they buy. So, you know, being able to present a track record of success is a, is a great thing to be able to do. And the other thing about it is that you want to present yourself as a solutions oriented person. You see the opportunity in the situation. If a business is having an experience that they need, they know they need to overcome, they're probably viewing it as a problem. And when you don't see it as a problem, but as a question to which you're seeking the answer, that they are seeking the answer, then you can say, I have a solution here for you that I can present to you, make it easy for you, and, uh, and be the one who gets this to happen for you. So uh, those are, those are the, the, uh, the basics of presenting yourself as an expert. Look at all the different ways that you can say that you've done things. Make a list of all the different problems that you've solved for different businesses in case other opportunities come up that you may not have visualized at first and open the field for yourself to draw in those opportunities because when you're prepared for them, they show up. And then you also understand yourself really well and you can have the confidence to say, I know how to do this and uh, the, the person's gonna feel that confidence. Besides that, you want to let them know that there's more to you than that just the one thing that you're talking about here, that you're willing to learn more about what they need and about how their process works and that you're doing uh, ongoing education if, it's, if, if that's something that you should bring up. So they, they get that you're involved and you're, you're not a static thing. You have more than one, uh, one possibility to offer them. So here I'm going to pause and uh, and ask. And what do you think is your strongest skill set in a conversation? Like you you know who your customer is based on what we were talking about earlier, or you have an idea who your customer is. What what's your what's your strongest asset for your customers? Can I say? Yeah. I think for me, what I value, and I think this is what I have, um, it's seeing uh, to, to give uh, to the person a different perspective on, on the situation or on a thing or whatever is going on. This is, uh, I, I, I think it's the most um, important asset because we do have all the answers inside of us, but when we see in the situation from one perspective that we already know, it doesn't make a change. But when I give another perspective, and it's a key for this person to open a new road because it's completely something out of that person's experience and it's abundant, um, gives abundance of solution. It's, for me, it's the most important when I have my psychologist. I, I, I'm not crazy, but I have a psychologist for three years by now just because he always have a different perspective on something that I'm working through. 
And I loved it. I treasure that. So he's a Jungian and this, whatever that his mindset is treasure for me. So when I look back on my clients and my students, this is what I actually, I do for them. So this is very important. And when I have a person who is a same mindset as mine, because it's already on that level where I just have a friend. I don't have that person who I have to working with or, or provide my services. So it's just my friend because we have the same mind. So this is kind of my thought process on the mic. So your, your strongest asset in the business conversation is that you open new perspectives. You open the doors, you 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 like, you, you present a different, a different paradigm, if you like that, um, yeah. that a person it's right there, but they don't see it. So you're kind of like, um, you're turning on the lights for them in a way. Yeah. Okay. Like okay. Comment? Lights are open new road. <laughs> new yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're, you're like the inner game girl. Yeah. Like that, that's the game changer, right? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, you're giving them tools and techniques to see a different perspective, whether it's through your product services or your one-on-one -on -one coaching, doesn't matter. And so, so those people feel better, right? Because that's 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 the whole point of inner game, right? Is to feel better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful. Love that. Thank you. To feel better. I do to feel better. <laughs> Right? <laughs> to own your, own your life. Because yeah. we've all been in dark places and we don't want to stay there. It's not fun to stay there. It's not fun. Right. So Betty, I would say that to your question that what one of my strengths is is to help identify people's the branding from the purpose point of view so that they can stand in a stronger spotlight out in the marketplace to get visible. Right, right. You, you, you have an, uh, an intuitive process, I believe, you know, you're, you're very, you're very rational, you're very focused. And you also have an intuitive ability to tap into the essence of a person's um, energy, and to, to help them to understand how they can build out from that, because people tend to think that their brand is, um, something that's just actually right away just not very far from where they actually are but you're good at helping them see that inner magnetism that they have that's what i see as being your strength yeah well thank you i yeah. never thought about it like that i probably learned that from one of my first mentors because that was one of his gifts like because yeah. he's working with talent he'd help them to like they would think this and he's like no no this is you're really, really magical here. Like, let's tap into that, man. Let's get that rocking. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I, I do because people tend to clutter up their what's right in front of them to and it, subconsciously making it harder for themselves uh, mm -hmm. by thinking that their strength is is just to the left or just to the right of where it actually is and heading in that direction rather than into their true strength. And your, your gift is to be able to help them see a direction that is, is much more economical. Uh, you know, like one of the things I've learned from you, uh, which is very profound, is don't reinvent the wheel. you got a process that works, do it. Make that happen. And, um, and that's, that's something people always want to think they have to keep uh, reinventing the wheel or that it has to be more complicated than it actually needs to be you know so um and and instead what's really what really happens is that you need to be persevering which is something that it's hard for people to face that that's the real secret but, but it is you know <laughs> so and, and how about you alisa what do you think in regards to um what's your strongest asset in a conversation about business I've all, well, coming from uh, retail sales, because I used to be a goldsmith uh -huh. and um, did management and sales, I can really hone in on what it is someone desires, what they want. And I, um, I'm really good at listening. I think that's one of my big assets. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. 
I think so too. So yeah, you 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 listen and you hear their you it's like you hear their voice of desire that they're not even aware of. That, that's that's and then I take notes. <laughs> take notes, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Take a little log. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great process, you know, because I, I firmly believe that listening is the key. You know, when you actually listen, then you find out what people want. If you, if you decide that you know what they want, then yeah, you're not going to know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, it's still doing the same thing. I, I, we're, we're still recorded. Oh, well. Um, so <laughs> we're safe here. So Apple tip number three is to focus on outcomes and showing the results and benefits. Are, are, are you seeing it? No, you're not, you're not seeing it. I, 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 the same thing again. Okay, stop, share, reshare. Obviously, I need, I, I need a little bit of a brush up on this particular skill, but um, here we are. And so with Apple tip number three, it's all about the outcomes because your customer wants to know what's in it for me. That's where it all boils down to is what are you going to do for them? And what's that going to feel like? This goes back to what you just said about uh, being able to know what people want and, and getting into that, that uh, when you understand how they want to feel based on these outcomes, then you can start to paint that picture of success for them and they're ready to listen to you and to buy into your vision, literally, because you've, you've done the background work of golden apple number one of speaking in the language of your market. So you're there with them at their place. You're not making anything harder for them. You're not making them go to you. You're going to them. And with apple number two, you've presented yourself and your skill set as being able to create a solution for whatever need it is that they have. Now in Apple number three, we're focusing on what does that look like? How does that feel? And uh, what are the tangible benefits of, uh, of bringing you onto the team as the solution? So I'm gonna go back to the, the painting the building example because it's simple. And that's like saying, so think of what it's going to be like for you when you pull in your parking lot and your building looks absolutely great. And your customers are coming up and saying, wow, this place looks great. I'm going to, and they're thinking, I need to come here more often. And then since it's a local business, or if it's a local business, then you can invite people to come and start their event in your parking lot. Um, you know, like if they have a bike ride or something or some, uh, some charity event, you can invite those people to come and hang out outside your business. And then inevitably they'll go inside to find out what's going on. They'll love the way the place feels and they'll be ready to make you part of their, their shopping loop. So uh, this, this is completing the cycle of communication when you get to Apple number three. Um, and you can see how the three elements of this fit together and create something that's more than the parts. The whole is more than the parts in this system. So presenting these outcomes, like they're already a reality in your mind. You know, you, you, you've got this, you can describe how it's gonna feel, what it's gonna look like. And possibly you're even looking ahead of what the business has envisioned for itself and saying, uh, you know, and, and presenting it from there, from, from what that future is, saying, this is what it looks like. Here are the, here are the images in my mind and in my figures of speech for you that, uh, that, that create this vivid picture for the customer and they're ready to go with you. And so then that's the time when you're positioned and you ask for the sale. You must ask for the sale. And, uh, and do it in a, a, a humble and yet confident way that's convincing that you know your value. You, you're, you're confident in being able to deliver what you say that you're gonna deliver and asking them if they have any further questions because they very well may. Uh, some people are gonna uh, say yes right away. Others are going to say no right away or no, I don't think this is a fit. Or they may say, can you give me more information, please? Which is, you know, very, that, that's the middle ground. And that's what happens 
very often. And that's the place to be really prepared with more information and a follow-up strategy so that you can keep the conversation going. You know, uh, if say it was that building example, they're looking around, they're, they're checking out bids, they're making up their mind what they're gonna do. They're probably not gonna say, oh yes, it has, it has to be you and it has to happen right now. No, but if it's a retail sale, they very well might say that. They could say, I love what you've got. And yes, I wanna go ahead right now, you know, uh, or drop me your price sheet or, you know, any of those and, and, or anything in between. I mean, it could be any of those, any variable of those things. So uh, you want to have in your mind already a, a picture of how you're going to follow up for any of those three outcomes. And what I have found is that when you ask people when they when and how that you want them to, uh, you know, they want you to contact them again, they will usually tell you. In fact, almost always, uh, uh, falling back on food service. Um, chefs don't have time to remember me. I have to remember them in most cases, unless there's somebody who relies on an email to send me a message. So I say, well, what's your order day? When, how often do you want me to call you? Um, what's your preferred method of communication? Do you do chat? Do you, you know, do you text? Do you want an email? How do we do this? And the same for any other kind of market, um, you know, again, some like in a corporate environment, they would much rather have you in their system and email you when you got, when they have an order. Or uh, in a gift market, then you're walking in and hanging out with the owner a little bit, chatting him up and saying, you know, you know, how often, you know, should I just call you in two weeks or, you know, how are you doing? That kind of thing. So each, each level of communication has a different follow-up strategy and a different way of connecting. The most important part of all of this is letting the customer that you care about them and that you're trying to make it easier for them. I mean, I flat out tell people, it's not your job to remember me. It's my job to remember you. So that's why I'm asking, what would work for you? And those, those, those words, just the simple, what would work for you, makes people know that, you know, you've, this is back to Apple number one, <laughs> what would work for you? I can make that happen or, or you know, uh, <laughs> what would work for you? And once I know what that is, if I can make that happen, I will. That's a persuasive sales conversation. And then people are ready to go, oh, that works for me. That doesn't work for me. You've made a simple choice available for them and you're not cluttering it up with everything else that, that you've had to go through in order to refine that conversation. So you know, the, getting to the bottom line is speaking in the language of results because it's all about results. Everything that we've talked about so far is about getting to Apple number three and presenting that outcome of success in the customer's mind. So uh, now I'm going to recap with the, uh, the, the basics of each, each point. Apple number one, speaking in the language of your market, meeting your customers where they are, and communicating with them in a way that makes it simple and easy for them to listen to you. Apple number two, where you're highlighting your skills and expertise, is putting yourself in the spotlight with your very best outfit on and saying, this, this is who I am and this is what I do and this is how I do it. And I would like to do that for you. Apple number three is focusing on outcomes. This is how it's going to be when we work together and um, I'm asking you to bring me onto your team so that we can make this happen. That, those three elements are the the crux of the matter i have a, i have a larger program that's that's pre-recorded that's on my website that uh, you can purchase if you decided you wanted to learn more about this and uh, i invite you to check that out and to schedule a conversation with me if you would like to about what your uh, your writing needs are uh, because no two people have the same thing going on. There's no two writing projects. There's no two marketing sequences that are the same at all. So, uh, you know, it's, it's all for me, it's all one on one. What do you need? How can we make that happen? And if I can make that happen for you, then that's what I do. And here are here's the, the uh, website information and my email information for uh, for my version of the follow up here. And so now at this point, I think I'm gonna stop share and
stop recording.